U.S. first time fires Patriot missile in South China as a warning to China. U.S. Army Pacific Air and Missile Defense Units working with Australian Defense Force counterparts completed the first-ever Patriot surface-to-air missile firing on Australian soil during Exercise Talisman Sabre 21 in the Shoalwater Bay Training Area in Queensland, Australia. In the historic first, soldiers based in Japan and Guam from 38th Air Defense Artillery Brigade, 94th Army Air and Missile Defense Command, successfully engaged drone targets with Patriot missiles as part of TS-21, Australia's largest military exercise with the US Australian and US forces combined biannually for Talisman Sabre, a key exercise supporting the Indo-Pacific Pathways Initiative to advance a free and open Indo-Pacific by strengthening relationships, building trust and interoperability among allies and partners. This year's iteration involves more than 17,000 participants from seven nations in a month-long multi-domain exercise that aims to strengthen military capabilities to respond to the full range of Indo-Pacific security concerns. In addition to the US and Australia, this year's exercise involves participating forces from Canada, Japan, New Zealand, the Republic of Korea, and the United Kingdom and delegations from India, Indonesia, France, and Germany will observe the exercise. The exercise includes force preparation, logistic, activities, amphibious landings, ground force maneuvers, urban operations, air combat and maritime operations. Activities will peak from July 18 to 31 across Queensland. Missiles that can reach long distances are a key deterrence in the Indo-Pacific region for challenging the threats posed by China, Admiral. Philip Davidson, the commander of Indo-Pacific Command, told congressional lawmakers this week. Davidson spoke to the Senate and House Armed Services Committees on Tuesday and Wednesday about why the United States needs to invest more money in troops and missile detection systems to protect the country from China's advances in modernizing its military. I see, China, developing systems, capabilities and a posture that would indicate that they're interested in aggression, Davidson said about China's growing military during a Senate Armed Services Committee hearing. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has named China as the Pentagon's pacing threat. But the focus on China is not new to the department, which already named the country as an adversary in the 2018 National Defense Strategy. More so, defense officials are reviewing the U.S. strategy for China through a 15-member task force. For fiscal year 2021, which ends Sept. 30, Congress funded $2.2 billion in the Pacific Deterrence Initiative to counter Chinese influence in the region and increase cooperation with Pacific allies and partners. Davidson said he supports additional funding for the initiative in fiscal year 2022, which is slated to reach $4.6 billion. Davidson called the status of American forces positioned in the region as static, and their conventional deterrence as eroding, as China builds and positions more ships in the region than the U.S. has there now. Having a posture that promotes deterrence is critical for America to respond to threats there, he said. It takes almost three weeks for forces to arrive to the region from the West Coast and 17 days from Alaska. Davidson said he believes the U.S. must have a robust amount of forces spread out in permanently based locations in the region, 
as well as the ability to accommodate rotational forces to allow for a better response to threats. These forces include maritime as well as surveillance forces. To support a dispersed force throughout the Pacific and deter actions against them, the United States needs to increase the stockpile of long-range missiles to counter China's growing stockpile, Davidson said. In 2019, the U.S. left the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, or INF, due to claims that Russia violated the agreement and concern about China's ability to develop and build the missiles banned in the treaty because it was not a party to it. The treaty did not allow the U.S. or Russia to have intermediate missiles with ranges of 300 to 3,400 miles. Within that range, a missile from China can reach many of America's allies in the Indo-Pacific region as well as Guam, 